Okay, good morning. Uh, welcome to the council update for, what is this, November 3rd. Um, I'm going to touch on uh, our meetings with the government of Alberta yesterday and the announcement that was made, and then we'll move into the, the last agenda, which was October 26th. Um, so what happened yesterday, the uh, Minister Danielle Larve came down from the government of Alberta, um, made a couple announcements. The first one, the big one being um, funding for the Southwest Berm uh, to the tune of $30 million. So that takes care of the Southwest Berm uh, and the Fifth Street Berm, um, as well as the Lynham Bridge um, enhancements or rehabilitation of that bridge. So um, that's three big, big items. So where the Southwest Berm is at is we're just doing the final engineering on it now. Um, from there, it'll move into all the environmental, you know, the regulatory um, approvals and all those things. So uh, there's also a lot of landowner consultations that have to happen. And um, we've been working with the landowners for the last year and a half, two years on this. And back when the diversion was on the table and uh, we all know what a ridiculous idea that turned out to be. So um, we'll work through those issues. It's no different than any other berm that was built in town. There's landowners that are affected at all times. So we've just got to make sure that those connections are made and those uh, conversations are held. Um, the other piece, of course, are the bags on 12th Avenue. Everybody's, um, you know, and I said it before that as soon as we have funding from the Alberta government, uh, we'll get looking at getting rid of those bags. The problem is we're about eight months to a year behind schedule from um, the provincial election that happened and then the new NDP government getting their feet wet and learning about everything that we're doing. The timeline we're on now is it's now November. We're not going to have engineering, those kind of right off December. Nobody does anything in December. So um, we won't have all these approvals done until you know, March at the earliest. We're hoping that the berm can be functionally complete by June um, or as soon as it is functionally complete, which is to about 1120 CMS of protection. Once that level of protection is in place, then we can remove the bags. That, or we will assess the flood risk at the end of June, which is usually minimal, and if we feel comfortable and construction is moving along, we've got another year ahead of us before the next flood season, let's just get rid of the bags um, and open up 12th Avenue. We want it open as much as anybody else. I live over there, a couple, another councillor lives over there. We know what a pain in the butt the whole thing is. It looks like crap, we want it gone, um, but we will not risk putting this town at risk um, one bit. So that is far more priority than any inconvenience that those bags are. And that's all they are is an inconvenience. So um, we're working on it. As soon as we can get rid of them, they'll be gone. But it, it should be within the next seven months at the latest. Um, OK, there's that. Oh, the other part of the announcement was uh, on the DRP end of things. Um, a very good portion of it, you know, a good announcement was the fact that they're not going to be clawing money out of people's hands um, if they gave payments under $5,000, overpayments under $5,000. Um, that's very important. It's one that we were asking for them to back off from, so they did that. Um, there's about 75 files out there in southern Alberta that are payments of over $5,000, they range from anywhere from $6,000 to $89,000, and um, there's only 75 of them. They're not all in High River. I don't know the scenarios they're dealing with. What they did assure us, though, was that they are trying to um, not have to take the money back, but just get proper documentation for these things. So um, we'll go from there. The, uh, for the council meeting itself, Pretty quick council meeting. We had the organizational meeting beforehand. That is where all the dates and times of the council meetings are set. Nothing is changing. They're still every second Monday at 3 o'clock at Town Hall. Um, 
committee of the whole meetings, we've, uh, we used to have those on a regular basis. They've been taken off the table because we don't really need them anymore. Um, we've got enough time now just to deal with things through council meetings. So um, that being said, if something comes up and we have to have a committee of the whole meeting, then, then uh, we will call that. The, uh, the first one that we had was a delegation from Western Financial Groups where um, Dina de Graft was to come and present us, I think it's a check of $5,000 that they donated towards our Happy Trail system. It was too bad Dina um, wasn't able to be there, but we did get the donation and we thank Western Financial Group for their ongoing and, and amazing commitment to this town, the, what, they, uh, what they provide to this town. So. Um, the next piece was the Calgary Regional Partnership, which we are a part of now, and the Onnit Regional Transit uh, Service. This is a service that's going to be running uh, twice a day, um, starting in Nanton, comes through, does a couple of pickups in High River through Okotoks, and then drops everybody off at the Brentwood uh, LRT station. So we just made a few motions. Um, you know, to continue the support and make sure that, that this is a pilot project only. Um, the concern that Council has is continuing with the pilot project and um, if, they, if they run out of money for the pilot project, how much money are we going to be putting into this? Um, I'm very, very interested to just see what the demand actually is. Um, Right now, I think the, the timeline to get to the Brentwood station is a little bit over an hour. So um, what the demand will be for that, I don't know. But this is why we're doing the pilot project to assess that. So that's moving forward. Um, monthly update of planning, building activity in the town. Um, manager of planning, uh, Khalid Mohammed, he just brought us an update so that uh, everybody in town, you can see the update on the, on the council minutes. There's a lot on it with all the development going on in this town, which is an enormous amount. Um, you know, Canadian Tire opening up, uh, PV Mart expansion, Mark's Work Warehouse opening up. Those are huge things for High River. The new Tim Hortons out in the, in the northwest area and the little strip mall that's going in there, and there's, I think, uh, another gas station that's going in there. Um, we're moving forward a, at a rapid at a rapid pace here. Um, the new Flies Etc. building is finishing up down the street here, and um, that's going to be another great addition for High River. The um, the critical thing, and I think the important thing to mention, is there was a lot of projects that certain d developers or landowners had put on hold um, with the excuse of the flood. Um, and we gave them some leniency there as to how fast they had to develop, but um, that's kind of behind us. There's proof that there's more than enough business in this town and things are happening and people are confident with it and they're developing. We've got to hold these other guys to task so that we get some of these um, half-built projects cleaned up and finished. So um, our planning department is doing an excellent job in working with those guys and, um, and we'll be holding their feet to the fire to make sure these things get cleaned up. Um, proposed renewal program for 2016 to 2020. That's just all the projects that are still ongoing, rebuilds from the flood, obviously. The Southwest Berm and those kinds of things, uh, Fifth Street Berm, those are all part of it. But um, there's smaller things like finishing up the water treatment plant upgrades and the uh, um, starting and the Wallaceville cleanup. The Center Street Bridge um, absolutely has to happen. The other thing the government gave us yesterday was there's a couple of million dollars available for communities to do their flood modeling. That is a critical piece for, um, for us to design the new Center Street Bridge, and the government wants to see that mapping done um, when we present our, our bridge uh, concepts to them for funding. So. Um, just because the bridge wasn't announced yesterday, it is still happening. Everybody knows it has to go in. Um, this one's going to get blown out if we if we have another uh, major event. So um, it's got to be done, and we'll, we'll just continue on with it. Downtown and 4th Avenue parking. If there's one thing that tells me that High River is moving along and we're past the flood, it's the fact that our biggest issue is parking. So. Two thumbs up, High River, well done. 
um, previous to this council, the council before the major election issue was a roundabout. So we're back. Um, here's the thing with 4th Avenue. To clear it up, number one, 4th Avenue was not designed to be a road that everybody just, it's not Deerfoot Trail through there. Yes, it's nice and it's pretty and everybody likes to drive it. It's not designed. Um, so that it's a through fare. We've got 3rd Avenue and 5th Avenue on either side of it. Those are your through fares. If you just got to get from McLeod to 1st, those are the ones you use. Um, don't go down 4th just to go down 4th. Um, we've tightened it up. It's a pedestrian first road. That's it. The only it. reason why vehicles are allowed down on 4th Avenue, we had talked a lot about it as having it pedestrian only and closing it off. Um, I don't think that's, the, well, I know that's not the right way to do it. You have to even, um, that's been tried in the States a lot back in the, back in the 80s and 90s. There's a lot of little towns and little areas that they did that, but um, no vehicles really hurts business. So um, you have to have access, but we can't be clogging access and thinking we have to have all the vehicles we possibly can squeeze onto the street that that's what creates good business. That's completely false. We proved that before. Um, the other, the biggest reason why 4th Avenue has vehicles on it is because of the doctor's office. There needs to be access to that doctor's office with handicapped spots and the health unit as well. So that is what we're asking 4th Avenue. The biggest issue that has been in play with that road is that people have been parking on the street. The street is not straight. It's not the old dumbed down North American way, straight right angles with everything you do. Um, sorry, but we actually thought out of the box a little bit and made that street unique and made it beautiful. And, and it's, a, it's a huge attraction for High River right now. So, and always will be. It's the reason why the farmer's market is su so successful down there. So the problem is people are parking on the streets. The reason why they're parking on the streets is because of the curve in it, it kind of feels like you're in a parking spot. I don't blame people for parking there because um, it's not a straight street and it kind of feels like when you move over there that you're sort of, oh, I guess that's parking. That's fine. What we have to do is fix it and actually mark it with no parking signs in those areas and actually enforce that. That's what will clear 4th Street up or 4th Avenue up. Um, it is wide enough for two vehicles. That's been proven. You can go downtown anytime. This, these roads have been opened up for a year and a half now. Vehicles go by each other every single day. They're not all car accidents all over the place. Um, there's more than enough for two dually trucks to pass each other. We watch five ton trucks pass each other on these streets during construction. Don't tell me they're not wide enough. They are. Um, Skill level might be a bit of an issue for some, but um, that's fine. That's the deal with 4th Avenue. The park, no parking signs are going to go in, and we will be ticketing people for that. We will be enforcing it because it has to happen or else we don't have the street as what we envisioned it. So that's all there is to 4th Avenue. Um, biggest reason why we delayed putting the parking, no parking signs on is because when there was all the construction on first and fifth um kind of tough to ticket somebody and then when they ask you well where do we park you kind of shrug your shoulders and go down i don't know um, we weren't going to do that to people so um now that first and fifth are done there's a ton of parking available on both those roads um as well, the new parking lot that's going in um, just behind Service Credit Union, that'll hold another 18 to 20 vehicles, so that helps. We still have to get to bigger parking lots. The plan is to get up to 70 vehicles. We took out 42 spots. Uh, we're going to increase it to having about a little over 80 spots available um, by the end of next year. So um, there's more than enough parking in this town. I think it's proven every day what you know, that there isn't really a parking problem downtown because any day that we go downtown, you can find a spot. Um, there's no issue there, but it'll take a while to convince some people, which is just fine. Um, so there's your update. That's where we're at.
Away we go. Thank you very much.